If you've never had oxtail, you are missing out. Now, oxtail is just the tail of the cow, but there is a lot of amazingly flavorful meat in there. The trick is you got to give it time to tenderize. And we're going to do that in two stages. First, we're going to smoke it, then we're going to braise it, and then we're going to enjoy it. And as you can see here, this is an oxtail all cut up. You have the fat sections, which are closer to the cow, and the end sections, which are further away from the body of the cow. Now, even though these end sections are very thin and there's very little meat on them, they will give a lot of flavor to the braise when we have this in that braising portion of the cook. So those stay in. And there is a little bit of meat on them and we're not gonna let that go to waste. Now, we're gonna be doing this tomorrow out on the grill, but today we've gotta to get these seasoned up. And the first step is I wanna cut a little bit of the excess fat off of some of these bigger pieces. Just some of it, not all of it, just the bigger, thicker pieces, some of it. And there can be a tough membrane on parts of the oxtail. That's what smoking and braising will help break down. All right, let's get these seasoned up. Now I am gonna be using a binder today. I know a lot of times I don't, but there are some dry spots on here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce on the outside. And this is sort of a very almost thick Worcestershire from my Sprouts Market. And I'll just move this around on all these here. I'm not gonna coat everybody. We'll just take this and rub it around a bit. This will help our rub adhere to any of those dry spots. And the rub I'm gonna be using today is my Smoky Sweet Rub. I'll put a link in the video description to a video on how to make it, really simple. Just gonna start hitting these, move them around. All right, these are gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, soak in that seasoning, and tomorrow I will see you out at the grill. All right, the Weber kettle is up to temp. My target temp today is 250 to 275. In a minute, we're gonna put on a piece of red oak, but first I wanna go ahead and get our oxtails on. Using the Mallory cast iron grate and the Mallory firewall today. I'm gonna have it set up in sort of a slow and sear configuration so it can get probably about five or six hours to cook out of this. Get our piece of red oak on here. All right, let's go ahead and get the lid on, get smoking. We're gonna come back in an hour, probably give them a spritz at that point, and then they'll go another hour in smoke before we start moving into the braising portion of this cook. See you back here in about an hour. All right, we've been going one hour. Our temp is holding really steady, right around 275. And I get a lot of questions about how I dial in a temp and keep it there. Well, on this Weber kettle, this is the performer. I added two things. I added a temperature gauge, which is closer to grate level. And I added what is generally called a smoke hole. That's on the SNS Grills kettle and they sell a kit to add it to other kettles just by closing the bottom vent on the kettle and using the smoke hole to adjust temperature. It's really easy to dial in. Let's go ahead and check our oxtails. Those are looking fantastic. I do wanna give them a spritz, a couple dry spots on top. We're gonna get the lid back on. I mean, these are gonna go for another hour just on the grate before we begin the braising process. All right, we've been going two hours. It is time to transfer the oxtail into a foil pan to begin braising. Oh, wow. Those are looking fantastic. So in my foil pan here, I've got one carrot and one celery stalk that's just been chopped up. This is gonna bring some more flavor with the liquids we add. Start getting our oxtail in here. Now this addition is optional, but I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of Calvados. It's like an apple liqueur. Got a couple cups of 
beef broth going in here. This is unsalted. We're gonna cover this tightly with foil. So that's gonna go for three hours on the heat. Then it's gonna come off, rest for half an hour, then we'll open it up. So the next time I see you, we'll be inside for the unveiling. So our oxtails are almost done resting. They had three hours left on the grill in that foil pan, took them off. They've just been sitting over here on the stove, still in the foil, haven't opened them. And we're gonna make some mashed potatoes to go with them. Some garlic sour cream mashed potatoes. Now I have two and three quarter pounds of russet potatoes here that I boiled up. And I just wanna break these down before I add the rest of the ingredients. Just wanna give them a quick mash. First thing to add is three tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm gonna get this in here when this is nice and hot so this will get all melty. One tablespoon of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of dried chives. Now before we add the rest of our ingredients, I wanna get this butter and these other seasonings mixed in here. I'm gonna get in here with a spoon right now. Next up is a quarter cup of half and half. We can always add more if we need to, but it's harder to take it out. Finally, three tablespoons of sour cream. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Get in here and mix that in. Really at this stage, it's about how creamy you want your mashed potatoes. Do you want it a little chunkier, more rustic, or do you want it smoother? You can add some more half and half if you want it smoother. I'm gonna add a little more half and half, one or two tablespoons. And if you like a more garlicky flavor, you can add more garlic. We'll give this a taste in a second here, see if we need to adjust for anything. That's looking good to me. A little taste here. Mmm, that is good. I just want a little more salt, nice big pinch. Mix that in with our mixing spoon. All right, let's plate some of these up with some oxtail. Get some of our garlic sour cream mashed potatoes on here. It's gonna be a great bed for some oxtail. Now, some of our oxtail. Oh, take a big one and a kind of a smallish one there. Now, if you want to, you can take all that juice that's left in the pan, skim off the fat, Maybe reduce it a little bit in a pan and make a nice little sauce or gravy to go in here. But there's so much juice coming off of this, like right here on these potatoes. I don't think it needs it if you put the oxtail right on top. Let's taste the potatoes. Mmm. Not just the flavor of the potatoes there. It is the flavor of that oxtail, that beefing is coming off of there through the juices. This is going to be terrific. How tender is that? Look at that. Still steaming hot, but we're going in. I know I said it at the beginning that if you haven't tried oxtail, you really should. The reason is it is a very underappreciated cut of meat. When you treat it right, you get it tender. I especially love giving it some smoke before you braise it. It is just outstanding. Some of the beefiest flavor I've ever gotten in a cut of meat. This is just fantastic. Hmm. 